Welcome to my channel. The slides that are rolling by are an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. Once you have watched the video, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button and leave a small comment. It's a really a big help to the channel. Uh, the YouTube logarithm, when it sees that, promotes the channel more and will be more viewers. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you for watching. Well, hello everybody. Angel and I are going out to the cabin to spend the day and do some cooking and have a little chat with you while we're at it. On the way out, I thought I'd show you what's happening with the greenhouse. Looking good well banked on both sides with that snow that you can see that slides down off the top. I have discovered over the years though I'm much better to just leave it alone and let nature t take its course. You can do a lot of damage very quickly trying to shuffle it out of the way and especially with the plastic cold it will rip easily so I just leave it alone. We've already been out to the cabin and have a fire going out there. I guess you can see smoke rising out of the chimney. This is a just a day visit to the cabin. It's noon now, or roughly noon, maybe 12.30, something like that. We're having some very mild weather. Today is plus 10 degrees Celsius. That's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Not a heat wave by most people's standards, but for not even the middle of March yet, it is uh, quite good for this area. I can't decide whether to call this late winter or early spring. No large snowstorms on the horizon. Um, in the, like 10 days out, the, which are never very accurate anyway, there's a possibility of some snow on some of those days, but nothing that's supposed to amount to anything. And the snow that you see here is a bit deceiving. I live sort of in the center of the island, and the location here with the cabin, well, my house also, is um, sheltered. And one of the last places on the island for the snow to leave. Yeah, the closer you get to the coast now, there isn't any snow. Um, Angel and I go almost every day to Herring Cove Beach and walk the length of the, the beach and along the sides of the beach and everything, the snow is almost all gone. We drive by the golf course and there's hardly any snow on it. Actually, I want to start walking it again soon, but I'm scared there might be some icy patches still. But uh, Very mild weather. We only had three really snowstorms, real good snowstorms this winter. I did manage to get one uh, snowstorm in the cabin video. But the other storms were very violent, uh, and I just wouldn't come out and, and stay in the cabin. I want to be at the house to see what's happening at the house. And also, if you can see, if I can get the camera up right here, what am I doing? That spruce tree behind the cabin has got to be a hundred years old very tall and very old and I always worry about it coming down in a storm but I've been on this property now for about 45 years I guess and it's it's still standing and was was that size when I moved here so I really don't know how old the thing is but I don't want to be in the cabin when it comes down across it is what I'm saying well I'll show you another little sign of spring here I think I talk about my hazel trees every spring, but they're one of the earlier signs that spring is arriving. And what you're looking at there is some of the male catkins, and they're starting to get quite soft and pliable, if I can get this one in the view here. Maybe I can't, but the uh, lengthening out and getting much softer. Earlier in the winter they would have been quite uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Earlier in the winter they would have been much shorter and not so pliable. Um, the blossom, the female blossom, is a tiny, tiny, tiny little red thing. You have to look really close to see it, but I won't see any of those, I don't think, before April. But the trees, I have three trees here I guess now, are loaded with the catkins. and. Um, it's been a good winter for them. I think the coldest was minus 17 Celsius. 
if it goes down to minus 20, minus 22, which is about as cold as we ever get it here, um, then I lose a lot of the catkins. They just don't develop. They, they stay quite small and, and, and hard. They don't, uh, they don't start to grow in the spring. They can't take that kind of temperature. And I don't think we'll get any temperatures down that low, not, not this time of year anyway. We hope not. So hopes for a good hazelnut crop, I guess. Well, I've got it very comfortable in here right now. I've got to be careful not to get it too comfortable. And as you can see, my girl is with me. <laughs> We've made several trips out here. Not as much as we do if we're going to be camping overnight, but still I had to bring a fair amount of things out here. What I plan to be making is steamed sticky toffee pudding. And it's a Cupcake Gemma's recipe. If you watch Cupcake Gemma, subscribe to her channel on uh, on YouTube. Excellent channel, one of the big channels, you know, with over a, over a million subscribers, that sort of thing. But you don't have to feel like you're pla plagiarizing if you make one of uh, Cupcake Gemma's um, recipes. They always, at the end of every broadcast, they always ask people to make it and uh, to share it on social media with the hashtag Cupcake Gemma or something like that. So maybe I will tweet this video with that hashtag and see what happens. I've never done that before. But the, the recipes are excellent. Uh, she owns a bakery in Soho in London called Crumbs and Doilies, I think. I think that's the name of it. Uh, and uh, a lot of her staff at the bakery also make videos. Actually, the one that I just watched for this particular sticky toffee pudding uh, was made by one of the other uh, bakers in her her, uh, her bakery. Gemma didn't show up. But anyway, that's enough about Cupcake Gemma. I'll put a link down below. It's an excellent channel if you don't know about it. Um, I think at least once a week, maybe twice a week, they come out with a, with a new video in there always very well done. I, a lot of that I think is still beyond my skill level. Some of the beautiful cakes and whatever that they managed to, to get out. Well I'm going to get started in just a few minutes here on the, the process of making this pudding which isn't terribly complicated. I'll explain a couple of things I think that are in the view here because I always get asked. Is that in there? Yes. That's made out of a burl, a, a knot like in a tree. And it's a uh, water scoop for a canoe. Bought it at the uh, um, Ross Farm Museum in Nova Scotia. Made at the farm there. Somehow this toggle goes around your belt and whatever, so you won't don't lose it when you're canoeing. But the the idea is to scoop water out of your canoe. I guess I don't canoe, but I liked it, so I bought it. And if Rory in Scotland is watching, I've got your calendar up, Rory. Rory sends me this beautiful country file. It's called um, Nature Calendar every year. And for March, there are some miniature daffodils in bloom and a European red squirrel sniffing a daffodil. Well, it'll be a bit of time yet before the squirrels around here can sniff a daffodil if they ever do. Always fascinated when I see these squirrels on people's videos in Europe. Uh, we have a red squirrel, but quite different. This has much larger ears. Cute little fella. Well, anyway, that explains that. And I do have my solar up and running. I have the lights on. Don't need it because a lot of two big windows in here in, in the daytime. But uh, with the new solar battery, it's working out very well. And I took. Uh, Southpaw Davy, I guess, gave me some advice to take the battery in the house, um, which are going to be extended periods of time when you're not using it. So that's what I did. I don't know if that should be. Yeah, I guess you can see it. It was an expensive battery. I say that because I can't tell you what the price was now. I'm never very good at something. Once I pay for something, that's it. I forget about it. But. Uh, it's working much better than the previous battery that I had, and I am taking it in and, and storing it in the basement in the colder weather and bringing it back. But I brought it out yesterday, so it's it's warmed up quite a bit and is 
Well, it's still registering 12.2, 12.3. There isn't any direct sunlight today. It's still overcast. There's a possibility, I guess, of the sun coming out later this afternoon, but it's just mild and overcast. Well, I have pre-measured everything before I brought it out here to make things easier, but uh, I will put it down below. Uh, I'll print out the recipe and put it down below the video anyway, so you don't really need to take notes. And Cupcake Gemma's recipes are always very helpful because she gives it both in cups, in ounces, and in grams, all of the ingredients. And I weigh, so I weigh it in grams. This is 177 grams of uh, pitted dates. I love eating them just this way. I'm going to slice them into smaller pieces. They're going to be uh, softened in a saucepan on the stove, some water added. But uh, she suggests using a food processor. Or I could have brought out a food mill I have and put them through that in the end, but I think if they cut them into smaller pieces and stew them for a while that they will still get Nice and soft and pasty. We hope so, anyway. So I'm doing 177 grams of pitted dates. Often you find a pit in a pitted date. You know, I'll know that it's there by slicing them, anyway. Every once in a while they miss one, I guess, whatever the process is that removes them. So. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to put these on the stove. I've done my chopping. Now there are my chopped up dates in a cup and a quarter of water. I have the gas turned on quite low. I'll bring them to a simmer and then they are allowed to simmer for at least 10 minutes until they've softened up quite a bit. We've well, had their 10 minutes simmering and it's quite a soft paste. Still some larger pieces in there and that's okay with me. Now you add a teaspoon of baking soda, bicarbonate of soda. And it will fizz, it says, when you're mixing this in. It's sort of frothing a bit. This gets set aside to cool down while we do the rest of the preparation here. Well, you need a one and a quarter liter uh, pudding basin, which is just basically a bowl that has that lip around the top. So if you have any other bowl or casserole or whatever that you could, the idea of the lip around the top is so you can secure uh, foil over it or cloth or whatever you're using over the over the top of it. Not quite sure if this is a one and a quarter liter or not, but it's the only pudding basin that I own. And it's an authentic English pudding basin. I know that because I bought it online and it got shipped to me from England. Uh, kitchen craft. Established in 1850. I don't think mine's that old, but the company was established in 1850. Now you generously butter it to prevent your pudding from sticking and not wanting to come out when you're finished. And this just gets set aside until we're ready to, to put the pudding in it. I love steamed puddings. I've never made this particular one before. I've made several other kinds, including like Christmas pudding. probably got enough butter on it. Well that's four tablespoons of hopefully softened butter. It's quite warm in here and it's been here for quite a while. Uh, that's 57 grams or two ounces. Uh, and to that you add three quarters of a cup which is 170 grams of granulated sugar. And 
now I try to blend them together. I may be a while at this because I don't know how soft the butter is. Certainly would work much better with a stand mixer or a hand mixer or whatever. However, the electricity out here is 12 volts. I do have an inverter that will convert that, but I still don't have enough energy here to uh, to run an appliance of any kind. They usually run at quite a high wattage. But I will keep working at this, bring you back when I think I have it blended enough. Well, that took a bit of time, but I guess I have it combined anyway. Probably not as light and fluffy as Gemma's would be with a stand mixer or whatever, but we're roughing it at the cabin. Now there's two eggs added, uh, one at a time. Binds it nicer. Two large eggs. So far, I haven't put any shell in. And something hit the floor. Now we add the flour, baking powder, vanilla and salt. The flour is um, 155 grams. That's a cup of flour, all purpose, all purpose flour. To that we add two teaspoons, two teaspoons of baking powder. Teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of vanilla. And I've started using Mexican vanilla. That's a one liter bottle. I don't remember what I paid for it, but still quite a bit of money. But it's much less expensive than the whatever the other kind is. Vanilla went through the roof a few years ago and hasn't come back down. So, get that incorporated here. I'll show you the steamer pot when I just a large uh, stock pot, stainless steel stock pot that I'm using. And I have a trivet in the bottom of it, one that goes with my instant pot to keep the pudding basin up off the bottom. Sorry for all the bang, bang, bang noise. I don't like to waste anything. Now we put the date filling in. been in the way. We're in cramped quarters out here. It's a very small cabin. But I'm glad I'm able to get out for another visit. Well, I can still enjoy the, the wood stove. I'm burning it very low today because it uh, will overheat in here very quickly. The cabin's very well insulated. 
As I said, it's quite mild outdoors. It was 10 degrees a while ago anyway when I left the house. It may even be milder now. And I think that's our pudding mixed. Down through the list of ingredients here, I believe I've added everything. And we'll put it in the basin. basin might even be larger um, than the uh, one and a quarter liter. I know watching the Cupcake Gemma video, I think theirs came a little higher up, but you want a good reasonable space because it is going to uh, rise with the baking powder and baking soda that's in there. And don't want it to overflow. Not a very fancy cut. I cut a circle of parchment paper. It's going to be covered now with tin foil, and the idea of the parchment paper is they won't come up to touch the tin foil. I don't want anything that I eat touched directly with tin foil, but evidently it would have probably would stick to the tin foil more than, than it does to the parchment as well. So anyway, I will get the uh, tin foil ready and ready to put a sort of a string sling on it and bring you right back. No video of me tying it up. <laughs> it took quite a while. Uh, I've put the tin foil over and there's the, the parchment as a sh paper as I showed you underneath. And then I put a piece of string, just kitchen twine, around and tied it tightly under the lip. And then taking the same kitchen string and, and doubling it over two or three times, I've made a handle by attaching it to the string that goes around the lip. A handle that I would not trust a great deal, but for lowering it and, and uh, taking it back out of the steamer, that should work. And that's how Cupcake Gemma did it. Uh, I've never done that before. When I make a steam pudding before, I used a white tea towel. And you tie the white tea towel around and you bring the four corners up and tie them over the top and that makes a handle to pick it up. So that's, that was my previous method and now I'm trying it with tin foil. So let's put it in the steamer. I've got the stock pot on a very low boil. And there's that trivet, you can see it down in the bottom. Anything, you could use a plate upside down, anything just to keep the basin off the bottom. My string worked to get it in there anyway. You don't want the uh, water to go much higher than halfway. And that's a bit less than halfway, but I'll check it. it could, now it steams for two hours and I will check it to make sure that the water level isn't decreasing a lot. You may have to add more. When you add water it should be already boiling so that you don't cool things down. But Two hours time we'll see if we've got a sticky toffee pudding. Well hello there, it's us again. We've just come back from a walk. Angel and I had a nice walk while the pudding is steaming. Now, I always seem to have to talk about books when I'm doing a video from the cabin. So I'll talk to you about a couple of books, one that I'm almost finished. An hour or two of reading and I'll be finished. Uh, one of my favorite authors, Ian Rankin, and the no name of the book is a, a Song for the Dark Times. It's another one of the Rebus detective stories, although Rebus is retired now, but he's doing as much detecting as ever. I think this book's been out for at least a couple of years and I used to get notified when I knew one of his books came out but I was looking to buy something online a few days ago and, and uh, came across what to me is a new Ian Rankin book so he's probably got another one ready to come out by now. I don't know if you saw the series on PBS uh, done in England, a British television series of, of the Rebus uh, stories. 
I can't for the life of me think of the actor's name, but he died a few years ago, so if they're going to make newer ones, they'll, they'll have to change the, the main character. But any time I read these books, I can see that actor when I'm thinking about the book, because he just portrayed the role as written by Ian Rankin perfectly. And the other one that I'm reading, I'm going to read, uh, is called Agent Sonia, and it's by Ben McIntyre. Uh, perhaps you all know about Ben McIntyre. I didn't. Heard him interviewed on a Canadian CBC uh, radio program earlier in the week. He's written numerous books. They're sort of the kind of thing that I like. They're spy stories, thriller stories type thing. But they're not fiction. They're historically accurate. And he's written a number of them. Uh, this particular one, Agent Sonia, her real name is Ursula. Uh, but she changes it to Sonia for some reason. I haven't read the, the book yet. But she was a Russian spy in the United Kingdom during the Cold War and is actually responsible for providing the Soviet Union with the know-how to make a nuclear bomb. Uh, she smuggled it out and, and uh, got it to the, her Russian handler, I suppose, somebody at the embassy in London or whatever. Looking forward to reading the book. Um, in the interview, uh, Mr. Rankin, Mr. Rankin, yeah, Mr. McIntyre, uh, said that the West was very surprised the first time that the Russians tested a nuclear weapon because they had no idea that they had the technology and come to find out what they were using was British technology. Well that's two books, that, one that I'm almost finished and one that I can hardly wait to start. Uh, I've got the kettle on to heat up some water to make coffee and in about 20 minutes the uh, pudding will have steamed for two hours, so we'll be having the pudding soon. Well, I bought some new coffee to have out here. At the house I use espresso. I only have one coffee a day, a latte that I make for breakfast, but I, I have an espresso machine and it, it grinds its own fresh coffee beans every day. So I don't normally have a already ground coffee. I bought this one at, um, well, I guess Superstore here in the Maritimes. It's President's Choice is the uh, brand name. That's the in-store brand name uh, that Loblaws owns. But I don't think we actually have, oh, that smells good. I don't think we actually have a Loblaws in the Maritimes. Um, Loblaws obviously owns Superstore. And the brand, I didn't already say, is called President's Choice. They had several what sound like nice coffees. Um, President's Choice, I always have great luck with it. Uh, that's the one that's in the Loblaws chain. Another one called Compliments is in the Sobe store chain. And they're both in-store brand names. The products are always excellent. Well, this is a Sumatra Dark Roast coffee and I'm going to put it in this thing that seals airtight and it'll all fit in there or not probably not I'll take some of it back to the house if it doesn't all fit what I had been using had been out here for two or three years and even sealed airtight doesn't make any difference it wasn't making great coffee anymore This is a chance for me to use my lovely stainless steel French press. A Christmas gift from my sister, which I absolutely love. I only use it out here, but it makes a great coffee and it's double walled like a thermos would be. So it keeps the uh, coffee hot for a long time. <laughs> I'm putting coffee all over the table. I will put a rounded tablespoon for each of the, probably make three or four cups. I'll clean up my mess that I've made here by putting coffee all over the table top. 
and I'll be back when it's time to add some hot water to the coffee and to get the steaming pudding out. I have boiling water to put in. Just put this on, and there's an arrow. Turn the arrow to face the handle. It prevents a lot of the steam from escaping. And now we just let it steep for, oh, I don't know, five minutes or longer, I guess. While we get the pudding out. My little string handle worked in both directions, going in the pot and coming back out. And it's had its two hours steaming. Let's see if I can find a way of cutting that string that makes up the edge of it here. There we go. Take off the foil. Well, I don't know if it was a liter and a quarter basin or not, but evidently it was the right size because it's full after it did its rising. All intents and purposes full, I guess. A little concave in the middle, whatever that might mean. Now the moment of truth. Oh, that's hot. Somewhere here I had pot holders. Hope you're still able to see what I'm doing. I might have kicked you out of the way. No, I guess not. I'll leave it upside down for a few minutes here. To hopefully it will release. Peek under and see what's happening here. Not yet, anyway. I'll come back for the unveiling in a few minutes' time. Well, I think I felt it release. It's still too hot to touch. And I've got it off-center in the plate now, but I'll be happy with off-center if it comes out of the mold. Ta-da! It did. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> figured half of it would be stuck to the bottom of the mold. Well, it's not perfectly on center in the plate, but that's as good as it's going to be, I guess. I don't want it to cool very much before I eat it. Or eat some of it. I actually won't sit down and eat the entire thing. But I'll bring you back in just a minute or so here. Well, I think the coffee has steeped enough. And I can push the plunger down. Turn the little arrow over to the spout, and we should have coffee. I've already put the cream in the mug. My mother always insisted the cream has to go in before the coffee. <laughs> Supposedly that makes a difference. Gotta taste it. That is very good. I like that coffee. So, we'll try a wedge of steamed sticky toffee pudding. Now this would be very good with a number of different sauces. I think if you watch, I'll put the link down below to the um, Cupcake Gemma recipe. I think if you watch their video, she made a uh, pouring custard, um, also called creme anglaise. It's a, a delicious substance, but I didn't make any today. It would also be great with a scoop of ice cream. I'm going to put a little cream on it, just regular 
cream. Actually, it's coffee cream. It's only 18% butter fat, but that's quite enough, isn't it? It won't whip, that's what I mean. It's, it doesn't have enough butter fat in it that it will whip. So we will give this a try. That is delicious. I've been curious about the name. Why it's called sticky toffee. There's no toffee involved, really. <laughs> I know, like butter and sugar and whatever, and you make toffee, I guess. So maybe that's where it comes from, but it is yummy and quite easy to make. If you haven't got a pudding basin, you can think of something else, a small bowl that you've got that would work, and somehow you tie down around the whole bowl or whatever to keep the top on it. Or a small casserole. But I just happened to have an English pudding basin, so I had to use it. And in the recipe, Gemma says that in an airtight container three or four days at room temperature, or you could freeze it. And so, you know, I may, well, I may well do that just to keep myself out of it. I'll leave half, half of it and the other half I'll freeze and I'll leave half out to, to finish and I'll freeze the other half. I think to bring it back to this nice soft consistency, I would let it thaw and then uh, just like 30 seconds or so in a microwave would bring it right back just as if you had just finished steaming it. Well that is it for our day at the cabin. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'll get this video uploaded and thank you very much for watching.